Way to go, Tommy. You did it, though. Ah. It's an Easter There's miracle. <laughs> What's that? It's an Easter miracle. It's a Jesus Easter funny miracle. Day. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're finally in, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm good to go with my sneaky Pete here. Raising. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what day or week or month it is anymore. Who's the sponsor? Uh, it's uh, Ogden Zone Underground. Cool. All right. Yeah. Just let. Just uh, throw it to me when it's like, what the fuck's the official uh, sponsor here? And I'll uh, go through it. I do know it is episode zero three one five of the TV Tan Podcast. I'm Bill Frost. I'm Tommy Milagro. We are recording live and in our bunkering nest. Uh, uh, in our respective uh, studios, me and my uh, well, three by five cardboard box, and uh, Bill, he's back at home at the uh, Ogden Zone Studios. Yes, and uh, Melissa Merlot is here, right? Yes, I'm here. Hello. All right. Yes, finally, after much uh, delay in trying to fucking get this thing connected here. I blame Jesus 5G. Christ. <laughs> oh. Oh, is that always, what it is? Always blame 5G, you guys. Blame no, no, no. everything. No, and uh, no, no Melissa Mer- 5G. Yeah, Melissa <laughs> Merlot is uh, of the Area 52 podcast with Marcus, and uh, I always forget who else is on there. Marty Daniels, okay. the wrestler. Right, okay. A.K.A. Danny. She goes by both names. Good, good for her. All right. That's not confusing at so all. So she has two names. Marcus has one. So it just kind of works I out, know. right? So it, it, balances out very well and yes and that is a conspiracy theory podcast so i have been deep in the rabbit hole as you can imagine with everything going on yeah well. area 52 just dropped uh, two episodes recently which is uh, kind of weird considering that they go for several months without it really now you've you've looked Put out a double album, sort of a use your illusion yeah. kind of we drop go here. So long, and then once we get together, we just can't stop talking. So then our like episodes that are really spaced out end up being like three hours. We have to do them as two parters. And of course, this one was all about the conspiracies around everything that's going on right now. So yeah, it it was a lot. <laughs> In my research, though, I was doing a. Uh, because I'm very into the effects of the media and how the media likes to program our minds. And I came across something that I wanted to tell you guys because okay. I thought it was super, you know, relatable to the TV Tan podcast. But you know how they always say, like, television programming, that it's called programming to, like, program your mind? Yeah. Yeah. I found another level of that because we always refer to it as TV. But when you say the full word... It's actually tell a vision. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's like you're telling people this vision to put in their mind and then it becomes real. <laughs> tell a vision. Tell a vision. I was like, oh, I got to tell Bill and Tom about that. Write that down. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. It's called tell a vision. Yes. That's right. Part of the programming. And, all uh, right. Yeah. So, uh. Ogden Zone is the sponsor this week, uh, drinking the uh, the underground. Yes, actually, uh, let's uh, clear this up here, though, because if I was shooting this as just the underground, I'd be dead. But <laughs> I, because let's face it, I'm in a bunker by myself, and, uh, waiting to die very, very slowly from all that's <laughs> happening in the world. Hey, if, no, if, if, I, if, if Metallica could make it through the 80s on nothing but Jägermeister, I think you can do this. You're right, and that is what sta- sustains me. My lord, my god, Lars, tells me I must per, uh, persist and then smite my enemies afterward. I'm <laughs> waiting for you, Napster. But in the meantime, I'm just going to be sociable and mix up the underground with our favorite, the Sneaky Pete recipe, which is... Uh, and this is the Jägermeister recipe, but substitute underground because it's better for you. And stop being a child. It's got right? vitam- it's got vitamins. Yes, it's got vitamins, and and it's also got three fourths of an ounce of uh, of uh, underground, as far as anybody knows, and uh, three. Well, actually, it's a half ounce of amaretto and an ounce of Coca Cola. I can't find the Luxardo Amaro Abano, but it's somewhere out there. But hey, it's uh, fixed up like a Collins. I'm sipping it. 
and I'm feeling fancy as fuck. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while, while we got, while we have Merlot here, uh, where can people find the Area 52 podcast? Oh, anywhere that they're listening to this podcast right now. So we're on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all those all your favorite podcasting places. But are you on Deezer? Oh my goodness, we are not on Deezer. <laughs> We're on Deezer. Okay, <laughs> you guys have way more outlets than we do. I don't know what the fuck Deezer is, but we're on it. It sounds pretty <laughs> awesome, Deezer. I'm sure it's Listen great. To it on the and, ask uh, uh, <laughs> ask uh, Marty and uh, Marcus, what's Deezer? I just only <laughs> want to hear their responses. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about you guys because uh, I wanted to watch a movie and I found it was free on a certain app and so I finally downloaded Crackle. <laughs> yes. Oh, Crackle's got some good. One. Crackle's got some good shit on there. <laughs> Crackle has some really good movies, like older movies. I was very impressed, but it's just what, such a fun sounding name. What was the movie? Um, it was one for my own personal podcast that I just started called Realitiki. Ooh. Which okay. is all about the media. Okay. And it was uh, the con- the conversation. Oh, I, rem- <laughs> I remember that. A movie from <laughs> 1974, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, it was, it's very good, and it's actually kind of the precursor to Enemy of the State, the okay. 1998 movie with Will Smith. Yeah. You can, what was uh, that show you, again? The Conversation or my podcast? Uh <laughs> You know, you you can watch all the seasons of VIP on Crackle, right? (laughs) No, I didn't see that. I used to love VIP. It's on there. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, VIP was when I went through my phase of not having cable or anything. And so it was like the only thing to watch late at night that was an infomercial. It was on Rabbit Ears. It was was a syndicated show. (laughs) Pamela Anderson's (laughs) A-Team. It's so silly, but it's fun. Oh, yeah. So I uh, wanted to ask you about the secret of skinwalker ranch if you're watching that on the history channel absolutely that was one thing i wanted to talk about of course i'm watching it because i love skinwalker ranch oh, of course it's, it's already really scary though I think. yeah it's uh out here in the utah zone you went to basin apparently there's been 200 years worth of ufo shit happening out there Oh, yeah, they have everything. It's like a hotbed of paranormal activity. They have Bigfoots. They have orbs. They allegedly have portals Mm. where people could see, like, just a hole open up in the sky, and they could look through it and see a whole different sky with, like, a different world. But can we go through it? Yeah, but that's that's all nice and everything, but let's ask the the deep question here. On a scale of one to Tiger King, how does this rank? (laughs) Well, here's a, here's my problem with uh, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, we we've talked about it here a couple weeks ago. That the uh, the secret to these shows is you've got to have at least one personality in the group to sell it. You got to have one wild card in there. And this group of dudes, investigators, not first of all, everybody in Tiger King is an over the top personality. Whereas, whereas in the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, nobody has a personality. So. <laughs> Which is funny because I had high hopes when I found out their head of security went by Dragon. Yeah, Dragon <laughs> does not live up to his name. You would think someone named Dragon would have just a crazy personality. Nope. That just makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that first episode, though, is that poor Tom guy who always gets picked on by my brain, whatever. My brain evil is, my brain is exploding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that the fatty tissue in his head separated from his skull, (laughs) and he had to go to the emergency room, and the doctors had no idea what caused that, that freaked me out. And yet he still works at the fucking ranch. Yeah, and then he goes back for more, and then of course he has other issues that start to come up, and all the things I've read about Skinwalker Ranch, it's kind of like that. Like, there's certain people that just, I don't want to say get picked on, but maybe they're... (laughs) More, like, receptive to, like, whatever energy is there, because I do believe it's cursed. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) The show, I like how much um, history they kind of go into about, like, the area and stuff, so at least it is a little educational, even though it's not quite as entertaining as I would like it to be. Yeah, I like it when the the owner 
the owner checks in, Mr. Uh, Mr. Banker the guy. So I uh, love to see him on the ranch. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll check in via via Zoom or Skype or whatever. It's like, so what what what, what the fuck are you guys doing today? <laughs> well, we, well, we want to dig. It's like, oh no, no, no digging. Yes, dig. So what the fuck are we supposed to do he, out here? <laughs> that's how that guy got that weird brain injury. Go dig. <laughs> Oh, so God. In the ground. <laughs> that emit tons of radiation. Yeah. Like, uh, I'll, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. See how it's going out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's only tons of radiation and weird holes in the ground, and they also shoot out beams of light for no reason. So you coming out here, boss? Oh, fuck no. I'm not going out there. <laughs> no, no. Why would you want to go out there? <laughs> it's too dangerous. He knows it's dangerous. That's why he's not going out there. But uh, one thing that they did show on that show, and they also showed it on Alien Highway, that I kind of feel is oh, proof. That's right. That, Alien Highway did go to Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, they did. But I feel like it's proof that alien, there are aliens. Is every time there's been a cattle mutilation, or they found, you know, just a cow that's head's been severed and there's no blood at all. Um, no one's ever been arrested for that. Like, no one's ever been arrested for a cattle mutilation. Hmm. And I just think really so weird. Like, it seems almost like there's a reason they know not to arrest anybody. Like, nothing to see <laughs> here, you know? Like, just another cattle mutilation happens all the time. Now, has uh, Area 52 done anything on Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, we did uh, the an episode on Hunt for the Skinwalker, which okay. is I, still on Netflix. It's a... Uh, documentary of skinwalker ranch okay and i think it's probably got to be brandon fugel in the documentary but they hide his identity okay and it makes him look really scary because they have like we have an interview with the new the new owner of skinwalker ranch but he doesn't want to be on camera so they give him like the weird voice changer oh. you know so it's deep oh and really shadow and then all you see is like him sitting on a chair from like kind of his neck down and he's just got this really fancy expensive watch on of so course. Just <laughs> crazy guy. but i can see it being branded so now i'm wondering if it was him in the interview yes and, and now he's all about being on camera just as long as he doesn't yeah, get no, anywhere near the ranch <laughs> yeah as long as he's not in danger <laughs> well i think uh i think area 52 is gonna have to revisit this now with this series i mean with the series on absolutely and i, mean, I know uh, once you get done with this uh, 5G Bill Gates genocide bullshit, you should get down to some real news on Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> Back to the real news of aliens, right? Yeah, keep it real. <laughs> matters. Well, that's what uh, that has to matter these days because, God forbid, we don't want to deal with anything involving ugh, deaths oh, and COVID and no. Tiger King. I would rather care about aliens, except for Tiger King, of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of which, uh, I think uh, today, I haven't seen it yet. What? But there's an you eight, haven't watched it yet? The, the, the Tiger King and I, the new uh, yes. the new episode that's dropping, uh, <laughs> hosted by, I believe, uh, Joel McHale, right? I hear he takes off his shirt, <laughs> which isn't really that exciting, but I've seen a lot of people posting on social media about how hot he is. Yeah, and they're, they're talking about that, and they're talking about how the new episode sucks. <laughs> Well, I'm worried it's going to focus all around that Jeff guy, and I don't like him at all. Well, oh, that dreamboat Jeff? <laughs> yeah. Who <laughs> hires the hot nanny. <laughs> you know, there's only one way to really rescue Tiger King and give it the legitimacy it deserves. Mm -hmm. We need to get Utah's own Del Shanzi involved. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> he is Utah's Joe Exotic. The Super here. Del. All right? Yeah. Yeah. The Super Del episode. <laughs> uh <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that going around on the memes, and uh, yeah, I, I think they could get uh, at least seven episodes out of that. <laughs> I wonder if he owns any strange animals. I could see him owning something strange. Oh yeah, oh, didn't yeah. he own an owl or two? Probably. He might have. I just remember he had that giant fan that he strapped to his back <laughs> and flew over rush hour traffic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I saw the uh, one of those other podcasts, one of those other local podcasts out there saying, oh, okay, we're going to try to get him on to interview him. And, uh, you know, if that guy listened to this podcast, I would warn him, don't. <laughs> I've, I've interviewed Super Dell. It's no fucking picnic. Don't even bother. 
long time ago when Super Dell was a thing, I, I've interviewed him. And uh, oh my God. it's no treat. Well, now this, this explains all the drinking you've been doing. Since. <laughs> yeah. Now this. I, I didn't drink before then. <laughs> this, now this makes sense. He also came to one of City Weekly's Best of Utah parties and wanted to fight everyone. He oh, wanted to fight you? Oh yeah, you know, you know, all you you liberal media types. I'll take you all on. I know karate. Oh my god. Oh yeah, he was a real. He was he was just a real treat to be around. <laughs> oh god. The worst, like Utah citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I owned one of his fucking computers. Well, everybody. Oh. Did. He yeah. Had one of the like biggest computer places. That's why he got so famous, I guess. Yeah, and so uh, twice. Uh, yeah, I went in to get it fixed by the guy who took over on that other company. And, uh, his guys look at it and say, oh no, this is fucked. You'll have to buy a new one. So I, oh, took, so I took it home, took a couple of YouTube tu- tutorials and fixed it myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I've heard that story from several people. Like, I was yeah. going to say, I've heard that's what they did. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's they, how they sold they do that, more computers. They do that whole thing is like, oh, we'll come in, we'll fix any computer no matter what you got. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. but hey, it's but hey, they good. love you, so fuck them. He was he was a crazy gun <laughs> nut too. I remember he got in trouble for like firing off guns. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just like randomly. And I think he owes because his computer place was called Totally Awesome Computers, yeah. right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> like those like old like car salesman commercials. That's him right. Just, like totally nuts. Oh yeah, and then. We also had a totally awesome guns. <laughs> totally, totally awesome guns and range. Yeah, <laughs> the sister company. <laughs> That's a terrible name. Yeah, I, you could you, you could definitely get a Netflix uh, docu series out of this. But you know what? Though he wouldn't be as exciting as all the people in Tiger King. <laughs> no, uh, you wouldn't have the cavalcade of uh, psychos like that. Even, even Jeff, who I hate. I mean, everybody in that show is just out of their damn mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I the- look at uh, all that stuff, and I'm thinking, even Sid Haig from Double Three Jets is going, you're a bit intense there. You may want to tone it down, son. <laughs> dial it back a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you may want to dial it back a bit there. Hey, Rob Zombie, you may want to have him <laughs> settle down a bit there. Uh, I listen to the podcast Joe Exotic before like I don't know maybe five months ago or something really before all this and it's <laughs> so much better to actually see all the people because on a podcast you just hear about it you know yeah and then but there was his whole uh, his whole uh, YouTube series yes <laughs> which they spent a lot of time and money producing and apparently it had even fewer a uh, smaller audience than this fucking podcast which is unbelievable <laughs> to me hired a producer for it oh yeah that's a, that's a, that i love the reality tv producer who was like totally into selling him and his show like and he got totally fucked over <laughs> yeah he got totally screwed over but he was a hundred percent like this is gonna make me so much money and i can see why now well, that- he, it made somebody some money <laughs> So what we're saying here is uh, for the liberal Hollywood media that's uh, hunkered down in your bunkers, if you want a reality TV show to produce, maybe we recommend TV Jam Podcast. It has got all the action, all the booze, all the booze. Did we mention we have all the booze that uh, you can have in a reality TV show. We're cheap, just, but we can be had. Just a show about us drinking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have the, the best sponsors of all the local True, we, we do have that on lockdown. Speaking of drinking, uh, I talked about this show last week, and I, I powered through it the other night. Bruise Brothers on Netflix. It's from the uh, one of the producers behind The League. It's, oh, okay. It's about a pair of brothers who uh, run a run a brewery in Van Nuys, and it's uh, oh. it's pretty funny. It's a it's got a it's got a lot of that League type humor to it. Oh, I'll totally check it out. I love the league when it was on. And also, it's got a lot of beer nerd uh, inside jokes. That's oh, okay. What, that's what I really miss right now are the breweries. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we can't go anywhere. Yeah, so if, if you miss going to breweries, you should definitely watch this. Oh, all right. 
nostalgic for me. Uh, I'll take a. You, you know, I'll, it's funny you're saying nostalgic when it's only been four weeks. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a Stella. Stella is the most boring beer in the world. Therefore, you must be the most boring person in the world. Get out of my bar. Get out of my bar. <laughs> Oh shit! So I, I would definitely. Oh, I love uh, Tiger would... King because I love seeing the fashion <laughs> of Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic. Uh yeah. And speaking of the Tiger King, did anybody catch uh, Saturday Night Not Live last night? I only sad. saw a little bit of it. <laughs> I don't, I think they should have added a laugh track. I mean, I know they're like. <laughs> Sad without was, any laughter. Well, all of all of the late night shows are sad at the moment because of just because of that. Yeah, <laughs> it made it really uncomfortable and awkward to watch, and I'm like, I'm not enjoying this. There were some uh, <laughs> there were some funny bits. Uh, the new one of the new cast members, Chloe Feynman, she did a uh, she did a Carol Baskin impersonation, which was uh, oh, pretty spot on, I'd say. <laughs> all right, I just stuck around for that. And uh, yeah, the uh, the full episode is on Hulu now. Uh, um, Saturday Night Live well, from I, home. Is full episode really the right term at this point? I mean, no more from homes. They should just start doing greatest hits for a while. Well, that's they, right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there was one uh, animated short feature in there uh, that I think was probably left over, and they were saying, "Well, fuck it, we'll use it here." Uh, yeah. Middle Age Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> That's clever. It was it was very sad but very funny. <laughs> Much like the whole episode. They're all uh, they're all divorcee alcoholics and one of them's dead. <laughs> I believe it's Donatello who's dead. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> now here's a bigger question. How was Pete Davidson's uh segment there? You know, and Pete, I'm using Pete the Davidson term had a had a couple of them actually. I think uh, Pete Davidson is in his environment, uh, being away from people. <laughs> he had a couple. So it took a virus. Yeah, he had a couple of people. He had a couple of uh, musical numbers. Oh my goodness! Oh god! I got two thousand dollars. I got two thousand dollars. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> they were pretty funny. And there was one. Uh, there was one uh, dating show sketch that everybody off in their Zoom quadrants. Uh, uh, about three women who've been uh, stuck at home so long with 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 no one around, they've uh, killed all their vibrators. <laughs> Eighty Bryant's Eighty Bryant's vibrator committed suicide. Left a note said, "You did this." This <laughs> 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 <a> suicide. <laughs> and uh, they're uh, they're it's like a like a like a dating show where they're like, and now here's uh, Braden. It's like. Yeah, man, I've been really, uh, you know, getting into myself and, you know, really brushing up on the classics. I mean, I watched every episode of Family Guy, so I got that going for me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and the women are like, I'll take him. I'll date him. I don't care. <laughs> He's good enough. Yeah, so if you if you missed that one. Desperate measures. Yeah, seek that one out. If you go, if you go find that Saturday Night Live episode, seek that one out. Seek out um, Heidi Gardner's uh, teen movie reviews. <laughs> they, they did a they did a pretty half-assed uh, weekend update as well. They did what they could. Oh, I was gonna say that seems like the easiest one to do in that format. It's uh, it's uh, it, it was one of the weaker bits actually. Oh, and of course, but, uh, but again. Yeah. You got Colin Jost and Michael Che in separate areas there. And yeah. Yeah. But you had uh you had a little intro from Tom Hanks. That was nice. Yeah, I watched <laughs> Yeah, so you let you know he's alive. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, tough. but wait wait a minute. What how do we know it's really Tom Hanks? How do we not know it's not a holographic projection? Oh. Well, it definitely was not his place. That was obviously a screen he was standing in front of. <laughs> Uh, oh, I don't know. Let me consult Reddit. Mm. <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> Look, we've already talked about this with Louis C.K. We'll remind our listeners, all one dozen of you again, Reddit <laughs> is wrong. Reddit is wrong. I am see quite, seeing quite a few posts out there that say, uh, you know, the Louis C.K. Sincerely special is actually pretty funny. Hate to admit it, but... <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
from a lot people of people are getting brave from a lot of people I know, and uh, yeah. and they're saying Thanks. hate to like it. that. I I really don't want to necessarily go totally public with this, but it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, are you kind of going to go partially public with this? I mean, yeah. you are on our podcast. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it yet. I might, I might, based on everything I've read so far, I might check it out. But I want to. <laughs> oh, I mean, you uh, had some good episodes. I want to. I want to find out a way around giving him seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's the kicker that's right there, isn't it? it. <laughs> and uh, is there any? Is there any Rassel's news? Oh, for God's sake, there is totally some news. I know one thing. Unless, huh? I know one thing, but uh, we'll see if you if, see if you bring it up. Well, why don't you just hit the music? And sports, a Tommy Milagro. Go, team. And the sports desk uh, hunkered into a, a tinier uh, version of a cardboard box. It's the sports desk here where we deliver the sport of professional wrestling. And we answered the age-old question, if there's a uh, wrestling match and there's no audience around to happen, and I answer, Vince McMahon's going to make it fucking possible, uh, let's just start, well, yeah, we're going to start with WWE here. Uh, there's just no ways around it. Uh, Vince McMahon's probably having the worst week ever, uh, and that's spilling out to the talent. Let's start with the talent here, folks. As of, uh, according to Forbes magazine, wait for it, <laughs> oh, uh, WWE is going live again and its superstars aren't happy. That's the headline, folks. Uh, so according to uh, a statement on uh, issued uh, from WWE to ESPN on Saturday uh, to deliver a sense of hope to its fans, and it says, quote, uh, we believe it is now more important than ever to provide people with a diversion from these hard times. We are producing content on a close set with only essential personnel in attendance following appropriate guidelines while taking additional precautions to ensure the health and wellness of our performers and staff. Now, this is where it gets real interesting, folks. Um, WWE had taped some segments already. But then Vince McMahon, um, and it says here in the Forbes article, uh, excuse me, a very aggressive Vince McMahon was like, fuck this, we're going live. Oh, wow. Uh, a very aggressive oh, yeah. Vince McMahon. Redundant. <laughs> yeah, uh, as opposed to how normally mild he is. Yeah. Right? So there's uh, now there's some uh, reasons behind that here. Um, and, of course, obviously, talent roster is very unhappy about this, especially when it was reported that uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the WWE employees, doesn't say who, had contracted the coronavirus. Oh, my and, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, now here's the part that really killed me. Now, this happened before WrestleMania 36 or excuse me. The WrestleMania 36 tapings, which is a good time to stop and ask Melissa, did you uh, have you seen WrestleMania 36? No, I have not. Okay, I did. Uh, it's uh, okay. Um, it was let me fucking right weird. Now. It was <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> uh, are you talking about the Firefly Funhouse uh, match or? Oh, I'm talking about Bone that. Guard? I'm talking about the that and pretty much the whole thing, really. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I said it before, uh, and I will say it again when I chime with Titus on and go, I don't know what it was we watched. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me after we uh, get into the green room <laughs> that uh, I need to get you the WWE uh, access, which, of course, you can watch on the WWE Network for only nine ninety nine. Not a sponsor. And we're still drinking hard, even in this point. Uh, but back to uh, back to the news here. WWE, uh, well, uh, WWE has been trying to take extra precautions, especially with their talent. And according to uh, Stephanie McMahon, according to Forbes, she's made it clear that the company is taking extra precautions in an attempt to prevent its superstars from feeling ill. Those precautions include, according to PWI and uh, PW Insider, uh, include. 
changing the ropes, buckles, and canvas after every match. Now, <laughs> let's, let's pause for a minute. <laughs> That's a lot of uh, Exactly. And I have seen many of our wrestling brethren here in Utah. I've seen them try to put together uh, the uh, squared circle. <laughs> Unless you've got some Chinese uh, in, uh, workers involved, ain't no way that's happening live. So, fucking forget that. <laughs> anyway, why? They uh, should break their wrestling ring. They should use one of those, like, octagons and then just, like, wipe it all down with Lysol. <laughs> You would think, but we don't have Dana White's money, nor are we going to do this out on a uh, island somewhere. I still have my people uh, that are working to try to find out the source on that. We'll come back to that. Next oh, out week. there on Uf- However, out there on UFC Island. Uh, yeah, UFC <laughs> Island. I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that one. <laughs> and I'm going. What in the name of Enter the Dragon is this bullshit? <laughs> But I digress. This does sound like now, a, that the, does sound like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode, right? <laughs> UFC Island. Uh, but now here's here's the big uh, here's the big question of why the fuck is Vince even trying to do all this? And again, going back to Forbes here, uh, they reported from uh, Dave uh, Meltzer of the uh, uh, Wrestling Observer Online. Apparently. Here's probably the reason why they're doing this. Meltzer noted that NBC Universal and Fox contracts have a clause that require only a small amount of shows can be taped per year. So oh, by what? by that I mean this: uh, think Christmas, think whenever they have to go on a European tour, and your occasional oh we're doing this for the troops. Now that number of raw shows can be taped in a year at uh, at uh, three uh, shows. Uh, but uh, the Meltzer says no one will say it publicly, but there's fear that violating the contracts could give the networks the legal right to figure out a way to restructure the TV deals or to hold back on payment. And uh, here's the other part, and this is a good well, they segue could, they, here. They, they could plug in some XFL games. <laughs> great segue, <laughs> sir. <laughs> XFL. <laughs> this might be the story you're talking about. XFL suspends operations. And it's likely done for 2021, and uh, it's uh, it's been reported uh, also on ESPN that uh, uh, a lot of the uh, XFL uh, staff, and we use the term loosely, are pretty much either furloughed or outright fired. And again, considering that Vince McMahon had sold nearly 300 million in stock. In order to fund the league through mm-hmm. Alpha Entertainment, that's part of the reason why he's feeling that ruthless aggression. Mm. More now, was there uh, something more you wanted to add? Uh, this is there... uh, also uh, WWE related. Ronda oh, Rousey. Okay. Yes, that was the last one I was going to go to. Take it away, there, Mister Frost. Ronda Rousey appearing on the Wild Ride with Steve O podcast. He of uh, Jackass. That, uh, oh yeah, love those. I love performing. I love the girls. I love being out there. But what am I doing it for if I'm not able to spend time with my time and energy with my family instead of spending my time and energy with a bunch of fucking ungrateful fans that don't even appreciate me? I mean, oh, wow. at the end of the day, I, I love I love being out there, but I was just like, fuck these fans, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, there's two ways we can go with this. Wow. And now, the first part... Rhonda's right. The schedule is brutal as fuck. Yeah, one, one part... one hundred plus days a year. One part of that interview said, uh, you know what happened if you got in 300 real fights a year? You'd be dead. No yeah. kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ow. And, if you, and if you think we're joking, folks, uh, consider a lot of the wrestlers from yesteryear, from Rowdy Piper to Hogan to Macho Man, they ain't the same. And they wrestled that schedule for fucking... Ever see dark so, side? See dark side of the ring for proof. Yes, great segue <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this last episode, I'm not going to touch on. That's a different story for another time. But, it, it was uh, a good no. one. First of yeah. all, the last couple of episodes, dark side of the ring. First of all, I, I was unfamiliar with New Jack. Oh, fuck! <laughs> that guy's nuts. 
And oh, he was like, it's one of the few uh, Dark Side of the Ring, ep- Ring episodes where they actually had the se- topic, the, the subject of the episode there live, as opposed to in a hole in the ground. So that was a nice mm-hmm. change of pace. <laughs> and then the uh, the brawl for all. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That is that is some intense shit right there. <laughs> Which like, like, wait, that, what was that, Melissa? That sounds brutal. The brawl for all. It was brutally oh. brutally terrible. <laughs> yeah. In so many ways, shapes, and sort of forms. It makes UFC look like uh, the Brishnikov Ballet. That's, <laughs> that's what we're talking about right there. But the point to make with this, circling back to Ronda Rousey, first of all, she's not wrong, and I get where she's coming from. And as for how she phrased it with the uh, with the Stevo, and I'm using the term loosely, podcast, <laughs> I will say it serves one of two things. Other than the fact that it's already gotten her heat with the. Uh, with the women of WWE already, and they've already taken to Twitter, because why not? Because that's where you go. <laughs> now, she could go one of two ways. This is speculation at this point. She could do what uh, Brock Lesnar is doing, and consider he was a WWE wrestler and a UFC fighter, and now, nowadays, he wrestles a, uh, a limited schedule. Now, her contract with WWE... Lasts until 2021, which, if uh, we're judging by everything that's going on, probably will be finished up by the way things are going at this point. Mm -hmm. But either way, if she were to come back, she could get tremendous monster heat and still work a limited schedule and really make some stars. So you're you're saying this is a play? I'm saying because of all the things that happen in the world... That's not COVID or Tiger King related. Keep a skeptical eye and ear open because why, folks? It's sports. It's sports. Oh. Tommy Milagro. Go team. Now, I could, I could see a similar situation uh, playing out here. Say Melissa Merlot yes. took to the media on a, uh, yes. on a, uh, on a, uh, on a, a large podcast. Not necessarily this one, but, you know, one that has listeners. And you mean said, Area 52? Sorry, publishers. Yes, and uh, she went out there and said, you know what? Fuck Salt Lake comedy fans. Fuck them all. <laughs> I'm done. Suck a dick in hell. <laughs> Which I would never, ever, ever send her. <laughs> and then she stages a comeback show. Yeah, and then no one comes <laughs> because they all think I'm a bitch. <laughs> Or, or it could go the other way. Or, Melissa, <laughs> you you just bring up that many more fans. All I'm saying is, <laughs> let's make this happen once the uh, once the COVID uh, 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 lockdown is done. Let's get a big ball of uh, booze in your system. Let's and a microphone. Let's take a chance. But uh, I only have like five fans, and I love them all. I can't say that. <laughs> You can sacrifice four. I, I know those four. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, meanwhile, meanwhile, we got we got some new stuff coming out this week. I'm going to tell oh, you. I'm oh gonna, yes. I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, oh, please do. Dropping today, as uh, this episode drops, uh, Monday, April 13th. There's a new uh, kind of kind of a a sweet romantic comedy premiering on ABC called The Baker and the Beauty. It's very, oh. very telenovela esque about a uh, young baker, Daniel, who uh, runs a runs a bakery with his uh, Cuban parents, and uh, he's a nobody, but he crossed paths with, a, with an international superstar woman, sort of a J Lo type, and they become Ooh. they become an item, and their, their two worlds collide. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, it uh, it looks interesting. But also uh, premiering tonight is the season 15 of American Dad. Season fucking 15. Oh my what? God. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How is that possible? I have no oh, idea. Wait. That's McFarland. I still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I still do too because I watch Adult Swim and it comes on there. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, coming up on Tuesday, April 14th, Chris D'Elia has a new comedy special, a new stand-up. And uh, anybody here like Chris D'Elia? Meh. Yeah, that's kind of my feeling too. 
he's got he's he 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 hits something really funny once in a while, but for the most part, I don't think he's as funny as he thinks he is. Well, hold on a second. But now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lo- I'm not gonna cross his fans because they're fucking crazy. Now hold on a second here. Crystal Leah has hit a lot of funny, but enough about Whitney Cummings. Now. <laughs> now- <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, coming up on Wednesday, April 15th on Hulu, Mrs. America, the story of Phyllis Schlafly and the, um, uh, what the hell, the, the Eagle Forum. Ooh. Yeah, the, uh, she Wait, was a, well, she was a big, uh, big inspiration slash mentor to Utah's own Gail Rizika. Who oh. is again? Uh, Mrs. America is the story okay. of, uh, Phyllis Schlafly, who, uh, Opposed the Equal Rights Amendment and uh, feminists in in general. She was a conservative woman who really pissed off feminists. Oh, so she's the one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> played by uh, Kate Blanchett. Oh wow! And okay. uh, dig the cast in here: uh, Margot Martindale as Bella Abzug. Also in here, oh, uh, you have Elizabeth Banks, Jean Triplehorn, John Slattery, Nisi Nash, Rose Byrne, Tracy Ullman, Uzu Aduba, and plenty more people. And this is from the people who produced and. Wrote, uh, directed anyway, uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now, where is this on? This is on Hulu, starting on Wednesday. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a big deal. Okay. I oh. like the cast. Yes. Also premiering on, uh, this is set in the 70s for the most part. Uh, also premiering on Wednesday is uh, What We Do in the Shadows, Season 2. Yay! Yay! Now more than ever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, coming up on Friday, uh, Kenya Barris, the guy who created Blackish, has a new uh, kind of a docu comedy series based loosely on himself. It's kind of like a cross between uh, The Office and Curb Your Enthusiasm, where it follows his uh, a version of his life. Uh, his wife is played by Rashida Jones, <laughs> and I've seen some of this. It looks pretty fucking funny. Oh, what's what's that? That? It's called Black what, what's AF. The title? Black what's that? Black AF. <laughs> Good title. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's not uh, blackish ish. No, no. So I'll give it that. <laughs> no, uh, I've seen a little bit of this and it looks pretty goddamn funny. Uh, also, uh, for uh, this is the, one of the most one of the most dad shows out there. Bosch season six on Amazon Prime Video. Titus Welliver. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> and get this. That's still a thing. Still a thing. People love that show, man. Uh, also, uh, launching on Friday on AMC is Friday Night with the Morgans. Know anything about this? No. Uh, we're hanging out with Jeffrey Dean Morgan and his wife Hillary on their, on their farm. Negan? Yes. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, it's zooming with Negan. Oh my God. And they have a, they have guest stars on zooming in from, uh, a lot of people from the walking dead and also supernatural, which he used to be on. Yeah. Oh, uh, when when is his writing buddy uh, Norman gonna be on there? Yeah, I don't know if uh, yeah, I don't know if Norman Reedus can ride up there or not. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, Friday night on the farm with the Morgans. There you go. That's cute. That's a cute title. Also coming up on Saturday, uh, considering what a what a big deal this is, I I see little about this at all. I don't think I know if anyone gives a fuck. It's called One World Together at Home, sort of a We Are the World moment. Uh, Headed up, headed up by Lady Gaga, musical performances oh. by Alanis Morissette, Andrea Bocelli, Billie Eilish, Green Day, Chris Martin, Eddie Vedder, The Usual Suspects. Oh, oh, hold that thought for a second. I need to have more of my sneaky feet to handle this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> terrible. So, sort of your, uh, your live aid slash we are the world moment. Yeah, to entertain us while we're trapped in our ca- captivity. This is uh, on ABC, CBS, and NBC. Fox is not participating. They're rerunning nine one nine one one instead. <laughs> good, good Fox. Yeah. The other networks do that bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's a yeah. lot of new stuff happening this week. Oh, oh wait, uh, is there uh, anything from the uh, Arrowverse or? No, they're uh, they're off for a while. They uh, they kind of suspended all their shows. They said. Oh, I thought either the I thought se- there was some. No, n- not this week. Not that I could find anyway. Okay. I think it might be in May. I think Supergirl and Batwoman uh, finished filming their seasons. They're just kind of uh, holding off on letting them finish. And there's other shows like Supernatural was supposed to finish its final season here, but they didn't didn't film the last couple of episodes, so who knows when that's going to happen. That's where The Walking Dead is, too. Yeah. 
can't get the finale. <laughs> Same thing happened to uh, Fargo. Fargo could not finish uh, filming their next season, so we don't uh. know, don't don't know when that's going to happen either. Well, I wanted to tell you guys, I'm so excited. I saw the trailer for Dirty John Season 2. Yes. <laughs> oh. The uh, Betty Broderick story. I can't wait. I got so excited. Yeah, it's Christian Slater and who? Uh, Amanda Peet. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Hey, Betty. Yeah. Betty uh, speaking of Amanda Peet, I usually recommend the hell out of Brockmire, but the new uh-huh. season is so fucking dark. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't know if you need it right now. It's uh, set in the year uh, 2035, and uh, the, the the U.S. has turned into a uh, s- sort of a Mad Max hellscape for the most part. Uh, apparently, all of Arizona is just on fire. Oh God, too real. Too real, man. And they're they're, they're they're trying to reboot baseball in the middle of all this. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking dark. <laughs> that sounds really dark. And that might be even headed. <laughs> Yeah, but is there a lightness that comes from Hank Azaria at this point? Well, he's still sober, so that that kind of sucks. Oh, fuck <laughs> that noise. Yeah. Fuck that noise. <laughs> but I also would recommend, uh, I don't know if any of you have checked this out on FXX, Dave. Oh, is that the mm. rapper? Yeah, the rapper. I was I was I was skeptical I was skeptical as fuck, but I watched it and I go, okay, this is uh this is pretty goddamn funny actually. Uh, I watched just a little bit of it because I had it on. And I thought it was funny. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Dave if you haven't yet. This is the show, uh, I think we mentioned this last week, that during when all of this shit started going down, it experienced a a 2,112% increase in next day viewership just through on demand. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's great. That's that's pretty insane. That puts it... (laughs) Just behind, uh, just behind Atlanta as uh, FX's number one comedy. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> just, a just, good just for, for a lot of TV shows. I mean, you just got a captive audience, like yeah, literally. Another one. That, another one that premiered huge, huge with a Y was uh, Broke on CBS, a new sitcom starring uh, Natasha Leggero and um, uh, Polly Parrott from NCIS. Hmm. It's uh, basically um, formerly rich rich siblings move in with their broke sister and uh, wackiness ensues. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with much of Natasha Leggero's stuff. She's pretty much always really good in something, and uh, it's kind of weird to see her on a network sitcom with a laugh track, but it still works. Hey, as long as it works, it it it, it definitely works. Yeah. <laughs> are you trying to convince me, or are you trying to convince everybody else here, Bill? Uh, well, it's it's a hard it's a hard sell to get uh, you know the hipsters to listen to this show to check out something with a uh, laugh track. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just laugh saying. Laugh tracks are important, though. <laughs> yeah, Saturday Night Live. See, <laughs> <laughs> I I hated laugh tracks until watching that Saturday Night Live without one, and I really understood their value. Yeah, the uh, the weekend update segment did apparently each of them had somebody in the room with them and so you'd hear like a few people laughing <laughs> it was that was even weirder I was gonna say oh, that wow. if it's just like one person who's like ha ha it, it was kind of like that yeah it was uh, even weirder than just having no one oh my gosh <laughs> oh and you know it would be great if we just had Stephen Colbert as his Phil Ken 7 character going Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. <laughs> That's the only way to sell that, baby. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, I think we've covered enough now. This has been episode 0315 of the TV Tan Podcast, live from lockdown. We want to thank Melissa Merlot from uh, phoning it in. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Did uh, did Tommy um, did Tommy tell you how uh, how I uh, initially set this up? No. I said Tommy a text. It says. Hey, do you think Merlot would be down for a three-way on Easter? <laughs> oh, yeah, always. I mean, isn't that what you do on Easter? Yeah. <laughs> and then I replied with, phrasing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we also want to thank Ogden's Own Distillery for the underground. They also make the Five Wives and all the uh, Porter Spire and uh, the Madame Paterini Gin. And they also make, apparently these days, they're making a lot of hand sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> And, of course, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, dismiss the fact that we have some other great sponsors, such as 
Sugar House Distillery, also doing uh, hand sanitizer. There's also Outlaw Distillery. They're doing booze. It's still tasty. And there's also Bohemian Brewery. And most importantly, if you can find it in your heart, you soulless fucks, go to uh, Booze Tea and uh, just tell Ivy TV Jam Podcast says, hey, we're social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Say goodnight, America. Good night, America. Come on, Merlot. You I can say good night, America. Good night, America. <laughs> yeah, jiggle that handle, uh, Merlot. It's time to flush. Hey,